Good morning. Today's Thursday, the 16th of September, and it's the feast day of Saints Cornelius and Saint Cyprian. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, who gave Saints Cornelius and Cyprian to your people as diligent shepherds and valiant martyrs, grant that through their intercession we may be strengthened in faith and constancy and spend ourselves without reserve for the unity of the Church. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Continue in the letter of Paul to Timothy, chapter 4, 12 to 16. Do not let people disregard you because you are young, but be an example to the believers in the way you speak and behave, and in your love, your faith, and your purity. Make use of the time until I arrive by reading to the people, preaching and teaching. You have in you a spiritual gift which was given to you when the prof prophets spoke and the body of elders laid their hands on you. Do not let it lie unused. Think hard about all this and put it into practice and everyone will be able to see how you are advancing. Take great care about what you do and what you teach. Always do this and in this way you will save both yourself and those who listen to you. The Word of the Lord. The Gospel of the Gospel of Luke, chapter 7, verses 36 to 50. One of the Pharisees invited Jesus to a meal. When he arrived at the Pharisee's house and took his place at table, a woman came in who had a bad name in the town. She had heard he was dining with a Pharisee and had brought with her an alabaster jar of ointment. She waited behind him at his feet, weeping, and her tears fell on his feet, and she wiped them away with her hair. Then she covered his feet with kisses and anointed them with the ointment. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who this woman is that is touching him, and what a bad name she has. Then Jesus took him up and said, Simon, I have something to say to you. Speak, Master, was the reply. There was once a creditor who had two men in his debt. One owed him five hundred denarii, the other fifty. They were unable to pay, so he pardoned them both. Which of them will love him more? The one who was pardoned more, I suppose, answered Simon. And Jesus said, You're right. <clears throat> then he turned to the woman. Simon, he said, You see this woman? I came into your house and you poured no water over my feet, but she has poured out her tears over my feet and wiped them away with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but she has been covering my feet with kisses ever since I came in. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. For this reason I tell you, her sins, her many sins, must have been forgiven, must have been forgiven her, or she would not have shown such great love. It is the man who is given little that shows little love. Then he said, in, said to her, Your sins are forgiven. Those who were with him at table began to say to themselves, Who is this man that even forgives sins? But he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. The Gospel of the Lord. To begin with, the Gospel the Gospel from Luke, and Luke emphasizes Jesus' great joy and great tenderness in receiving sinners who repent. And there are a number of examples, perhaps the best known is the story of the prodigal son, but the story of the woman who weeps and wipes his, his feet with her tears and her hair um, is one of the, the great stories of Jesus forgiving somebody and he has the little dialogue with Simon, who he doesn't want to put down too much. He recognises uh, that Simon has answered his question correctly. Um, the one who for, uh, forgiven the greater debt probably loves more, and this woman has been forgiven her great sins. But all through the, the Gospel of Luke, the emphasis on Jesus and of God forgiving those who come in to them in repentance is strongly emphasised. The first reading, the advice of Paul to Timothy, uh, while he waits for till Paul arrives, um, it's advice 
not quite sure to quite what Timothy's role was because we see there that the elders of that community laid his, their hands on him. Was he ordained? Was he ordained a catechist? Was he ordained a deacon? Uh, right, both those terms were new, weren't used quite then. But clearly he was ordained a role. And Paul is giving advice on, on the role, how to be a conscientious teacher, preacher, leading a good life, uh, observing self-control, etc. Um, Timothy was, I mean, this is fairly late in, in Paul's um, ministry, so Timothy had already done a number of things for Paul. So it's surprising that Paul gives him such good detailed, and in a sense, such um, early advice. A lot of this Timothy already knew. It's probably Paul, as I say, being fussy and repeating to make sure everything goes right in the community of Timothy. The two saints we are commemorating, um, St. Cornelius was a pope and he uh, died 258 AD and Cyprian was a bishop, Bishop of Carthage, died 253 AD. And both of them were both early writers in the church but above all they were martyrs, um, both bishops, Bishop of Rome, Bishop of Carthage, and both died um, in the course of their duties looking after and trying to lead the church. And we need to remember that everything seems so stable for us these days, but in the early days, especially under all the persecutions of the Roman Emperor, the, the bishops of the church, the leaders of the Christians were always in mortal danger and many of them went to their martyrdom, firmly fixed with their eyes on Christ, and determined not to give way on their faith, and were examples to others of how to remain faithful. And it's important for us to remember this. So our readings today, in a sense, invite us to do three things. Return to the Lord in repentance, to lead good and structured lives, and to be strong and courageous in defending the faith. We turn to our bidding prayers. The response is, Hallowed be your name. It is the Father's will that men and women should see him in the face of his beloved Son. Let us honour him as we say, Hallowed be your name. Christ greeted us with good news. May the world hear it through us and find hope. Hallowed be your name. We praise and thank you, Lord of heaven and earth. You are the hope and joy of people in every age. Hallowed be your name. May Christ's coming transform the church and renew the vigour and in the service of people. Hallowed be your name. We pray for Christians who suffer for their belief, sustain them in their hope. Hallowed be your name. And we precisely pray that prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord God, you gave St. Cornelius and St. Cyprian to your church as faithful pastors and steadfast masters, martyrs. Strengthen our faith and our courage by their prayers so that we may strive with all our power for the unity of the Church. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Amen. Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. All the best. Have a good day.